some examples of the most egregious mainstream uh, racist statements in terms of anti-Arab sentiment and anti-Islamic sentiment. And second, can you give us some details about the Joan Peters case and uh, Norman Tickelstein? Well, I once uh, collected a bunch of egregious Arab <coughs> statements and stuck them in a book, and I think they're pretty wild, but nobody doesn't seem to bother anybody. But I, I would guess if a professor at Harvard, for example, uh, were to describe Jews as people who, uh, so I remember the exact word, people who bleed and breed and advertise their misery, you know, uh, people might think that that's not the right kind of thing for a Harvard professor to say about Jews, you know, saying, let's not listen to these guys wail anymore. They're just people who bleed and breed and advertise their misery. But when a Harvard professor says that about Arabs, that's considered fine. Uh, if uh, uh, a leading uh, kind of uh, a hero of the left uh, said that uh, New York has New York City uh, is uninhabited uh, because it's got too many blacks and Spanish and not enough whites, it's depopulated. It's underpopulated. Suppose somebody said New York. That's the word. New York's underpopulated. There's a small number of white Christians, but you know, a lot of Jews and blacks and all those people. And we got to do something to overcome the underpopulation of New York. I think people would think there's something funny about that. But when you know, a hero of the left talks about the underpopulated Galilee, meaning too few Jews and too many Arabs, uh, nobody thinks anything about that. Uh, or when uh, the editor of a leading liberal journal uh, says, uh, Arabs lie, you know, uh, it's in their nature. So therefore, you don't have to believe what they say. It's part of their culture. Well, he said that about Jews. You know, you wouldn't last very long. Uh, if a well-known writer described, uh, a, a, talked about Jews and other third world detritus, you know, kind of rubbish, uh, you'd notice it, but not when it's Palestinians and other third world detritus, and on and on. Uh, furthermore, it's just, you know, it's like every report in the newspapers has got this. When Lebanon is bombed, every couple of days you'll notice a little item somewhere saying, you know, Israeli troops killed seven people in Lebanon. Uh, it's not considered an issue. You know. uh, on the other hand, if seven people got, Jews got killed in Israel, or seven Americans got killed in New York by a, ter by a foreign terrorist action, it would be considered something. Actually, I'll give you another example, which is, very, it's not strictly what you're talking about, but pretty close. Uh, the last uh, terrorist bombing in Jerusalem, uh, whatever, a couple of weeks ago, remember? Uh, the big terrorist bombing, real atrocity in Jerusalem. Uh, the same day, and it was the big front page story, you know, agonizing pictures of people suffering and so on. It was, yeah, that's the way you should treat a terrorist bombing. Uh, same day, uh, four bombs went off in Havana. Same day, okay. Uh, very similar, tourist places, just like the one in Israel. Four bombs went off in uh, Havana uh, in tourist places. Italian, fortunately, not too many people were killed, but an Italian visitor was killed. His throat, his jugular vein was cut by flying uh, glass. Uh, it made the New York Times under world news briefs, you know, a couple of lines under world news briefs. Uh, well, then if you follow the story along, the two stories along, it's pretty dramatic. Uh, the proposal with regard to Israel, the, supported by the United States, actually I brought it, so let me read the actual word so I don't make it up. I think I brought it. Yeah, here was what it was. Uh, when Albright was there, uh, the proposal supported by the United States is that uh, all Palestinian militant groups, what they call them, you know, uh, should have, would have to be outlawed and there have to be administrative, legal, and police action against military, political, civilian, religious, economic infrastructure, welfare societies, mosques, educational institutions, health centers, banks, investment companies, and et cetera, which support terror. Okay, so in other words, Israel is supposed to in institute a real terrorist regime against anybody who might be regarded as in some fashion or other supporting terror, and the U.S. supports that. Nobody sees anything wrong about it. I take that same phrase and put Miami in instead of Israel. Uh, okay, any, uh, gr any, any humanitarian group or welfare group or bank or anyone else who supports terror in Cuba has to be outlawed without trial, 
administer no no sentencing. You know, just toss them in jail, break up the group. Uh, how far would that go? Well, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, there the bombings in Havana are whether they were carried out by, we don't know, but they were certainly supported publicly by groups who continually call for terror and are right sitting there in uh, Miami, you know, all around Florida, in fact. Uh, they're not only tolerated, they're loved. Like, you know, Clinton goes and hugs them and kisses them and asks for their money and so on and so forth. And furthermore, they've been carrying on this terror since 1959. Like, it's not just the bombing the day, uh, you know, of the day, the same, happen, happen to be the same day as the Jerusalem bombing. Uh, so you can sort of compare the outcomes. Uh, but uh, in this case, it's been going on since 1959 from U.S. territory with U.S. government support and, in fact, with US, direct U.S. government participation. So if involvement, you know, if, if our own, say, degree of involvement in an act of terror was even a factor in making something newsworthy, the stories would have been reversed. It's the Miami, it's the Havana bombings, which would have been on the front page, and the Jerusalem bombings would have been under world news briefs. Uh, but it was the other way around. Partly it's racism, uh, but partly it's just that when we do it, it's not terror. You know, it's when we do it, it's fine. Uh, when they do it, it's terror. That's the definition of terror. You know. uh, this is an extremely dramatic case. Uh, and there are many cases like that. Let me just give you one last one, which is again dramatic because of the coincidence you might, everybody knows about the Oklahoma City bombing. Okay. Uh, so here's this horrible bombing, you know, truck bomb goes off, kills lots of people. Uh, if you recall, when the bombing took place, the first thought was it probably had a Middle Eastern connection. Remember? Uh, so there was all sorts of talk about how, um, I mean, some people say we ought to just bomb the Middle East right away, like Rosenthal and the Times, just bomb, bomb the bastard. Uh, others said, uh, well, if we find any Middle East connection, we're going to bomb, you know, bomb them. And uh, Clinton got up and said, we'll pursue them to the end of the earth and so on and so forth. Uh, there were big headlines about how Oklahoma City looks like Beirut. Remember that? Uh, big bombs going off and blowing people up. Just horrible. Come Here's Beirut coming to middle America. And great horror about that. Okay, it turned out there wasn't a Middle East connection. There were people like Rosenthal who said, let's bomb them anyway, but uh, <laughs> others said maybe not. Uh, well, um, th th rather, it's exactly 10 years before the Oklahoma City bombing, we kind of like anniversaries, so exactly 10 years before, almost to the day, a bombing did take place in Beirut. It's one of the reasons why Oklahoma City looked like Beirut. A, a virtually identical bombing. A bomb went, a car bomb went off uh, right outside a, a mosque, uh, timed in order to kill the maximum number of people, so timed when they were leaving the mosque, killed mostly mm. women and children, lots and lots of women and children killed, you know, babies torn to shreds in their beds, I mean, the whole story. Uh, uh, in fact, the Oklahoma City bombing was a virtual duplicate. Uh, now, if we're going to trace the attackers to the end of the earth, uh, we can easily get those guys. That is assuming that the U.S. Air Force has the capacity to bomb Texas and California and uh, maybe a bomb or two left over for London, because that bombing was carried out by the CIA uh, with the assistance of British intelligence, uh, aiming at a uh, Muslim cleric, Sheikh Fadlallah, who they missed, but they killed plenty of other people instead. Uh, so there's a perfect parallel. Now, just out of curiosity, I brought, personally brought that to the attention of a fair number of journalists. They, didn't, they couldn't even see the point. You know? They couldn't even understand what I was talking about. You know? uh, they could not understand why that's even a parallel. I mean, in one case, it's a bomb, maybe Middle Eastern in origin, that's what they thought, going off in Oklahoma City, so we're going to really you know, bomb them all over the place. And the other case was a bomb that we, we put in front of a mosque to kill as many people as we could in Beirut, so that's not an act of terror. You know? And that conception is so deeply ingrained in the psyche uh, that people can't see the point. Uh, uh, and you can go on and on with this. I don't know if you call this racism or not. I mean, it's somehow it's beyond racism, you know, but it incorporates racism as a special case. They were just Lebanese, so what the heck.